Good afternoon and welcome to All About Animals. I'm Sherry Gratitor and my guest today is Dr. Janice Krakora Luby. Did I do it right? You did. I did it right. Who does turtle rescue? Um, first question, why do we need turtle rescue? We need turtle rescue because lots of people get turtles as pets and then find over months and years that they have bitten off more than they can chew. Um, turtles easily will live 25 to 75 years, which is a very long time commitment. And people get turtles for their children, their children go to college, college students get turtles, they move into apartments. So there are many more turtles right now than, that, have home, that, that need homes that don't have homes. And I have outfitted a very large pond in my yard that I set up as a turtle sanctuary. And if people have them, I'll take them. Okay, now, what makes a turtle a good pet? A turtle is a good pet because it requires little day-to-day -day intensive interaction. In other words, if you are at work and you're not home during the day, a turtle will be very happy if the conditions are right to do its own thing all day. They don't require a lot of one-on-one -on -one interaction as a dog or a cat. You don't have to take a turtle for a walk. You don't have to take them for a walk. Um, if you feed them once a day, they're happy. They don't require multiple interactions. Okay. Um, normal maintenance of a turtle. What is an, a proper environment? Well, let, let me start out by, by talking a little bit about what is the proper turtle to get as a pet? Because I think this is one of the reasons why we have so many that are losing their homes. I think everyone is probably familiar with the little red-eared slider. Um, in the 60s, these were very commonly um, seen as pets. You could get them in pet stores. You could get them in at county fairs. You could get them at reptile expositions. And when they were sold, they were a little bit bigger than a quarter, and these were hatchlings, and people could buy them for a dollar, a dollar fifty, and would put them in an aquarium, and many of these little turtles would die because they were not getting proper care. Those that were taken care of, owners could found that they would grow, and this is a picture of a three-year-old red-eared slider. Still very cute, but at this point, they're about five inches in diameter in their shell. Nowadays, this is the only size that you can buy in pet shops. They passed a law back in the 70s prohibiting the sale of turtles less than five inches because of concerns of salmonella. Unfortunately, those continue to grow. This is a picture of an adult female, and that little circle on her back is a quarter. So you can see that they become very, very large. They'll, they'll get up to... 12 to 16 inches in diameter. So you're talking about, about that big. I'm talking right? about that big, and they can weigh five or six pounds. So you suddenly got an animal that was once this big, that's now this big. And I have had families come to me and say, we started out with a 10-gallon aquarium, then we went to a 25-gallon, then we went to a 55. One person actually had increased to a 150-gallon aquarium for their turtle but now they were moving to an apartment and could no longer take them with them. So the red-eared slider, while the most commonly available one, is not a good one unless you've got a very large area to accommodate them. One turtle that is a water turtle that makes a very good pet is the musk turtle. And these are very, very personable little guys. Um, they don't get to be much bigger than about this, which is nice to um, accommodate in a 55 gallon room. And they have beautiful faces. They're very cute. They've got nice markings. They have very interesting personalities. They tend to be bottom dwellers, so they spend a lot of their time walking around on the bottom. They don't need a lot of swimming space, so they make a very good pet. Now, in terms of housing, I've got a picture here of a very good setup. This is a 55 gallon aquarium. It has an area here out of the water for basking. It has a heat lamp to provide heat over the basking area. It has an ultraviolet fluorescent lamp to provide vitamin E. It's got water. It's got hiding places. And all of these things are very important for housing a water turtle. They require water temperature between 75 and 78 degrees. So you need a submersible heater. 
They require an out of the water basking area with a heat lamp and they need ultraviolet light to provide vitamin D. Um, one of the biggest problems that people have who don't provide them with that, that UV light is soft shell, which is a vitamin D deficiency, which causes a loss of calcium from their bones. And of course, when you buy a pet store, you're rarely told that this is what you should expect to need. Correct. And in fact, one of the common things that pet stores will tell you is, if you put them in a small tank, they won't get any bigger, which is a fallacy. Uh, the interesting thing about those is they will continue to grow throughout their lifespan. Their growth slows down as they get older, but they never stop growing. And so those those big females, as they get to be 30 and 40 years, they just older. So but it must be a lot of fun to have if you have the the space, the capacity. They're fun to watch. They really are. They're very engaging. They have interesting habits. And as you get to know your turtles, they do have different personalities. Some are more active. Some are more outgoing. Others tend to be a little bit more shy. So very, very interesting. Now, another type of turtle that people can get for pets are box turtles. And box turtles are a land turtle. Um, one very common one that we see is the eastern box turtle, which is a very, very pretty turtle. They all have different yellow markings. Um, they're also found natively in this area. They get to be about this big, so a very nice size, size. For, for a pet. They like warmth. They like to be outside during the summer. But they are also very easily accommodated indoors if you give them the proper habitat. And, and this is an example of a couple of indoor box turtle habitats. Uh, they differ from the water turtles in that they don't spend all their time underwater, but they do like water. So if you'll notice from the picture, we've got a water source that's good enough for the turtle to clean and mm -hmm. soak. And then we've got our same heat lamp for basking and our same ultraviolet light for the UV to yeah, help. I was not bones. aware of the ultraviolet at all. Most people are not and that's one of the reasons why it's such a common problem with turtles is, is soft shell mm -hmm. because you, they need that vitamin D to metabolize the calcium in their diet and if they don't you get abnormal shells, you get soft bones and eventually they'll die. Yeah. Okay, going, segue, the natural segue from that yeah. is someone who has a pet turtle. Right. Obviously, your dog and cat veterinarian can't help you care for it. Most don't have the don't have the expertise. And how the heck do you know that a turtle is ill? So the way you notice a turtle is ill is by looking for changes in their activity. Do they start, is your turtle no longer eating, whereas it used to be a good eater? Are you starting to see changes in the droppings, less frequent, softer? Are you seeing swelling around their eyes? Are they having discharge from their eyes, discharge from their nose? But similar things to what you would see in another pet, but you have to, they're not, they're not as obvious. You have to be a little more subtle. You've got to know them better. Sure, because the turtle's hiding in the shell. Right. And, you know, and you can't look at the whole body and say, gee, this doesn't right. look right. Right. Um, and soft shell, obviously, you can tell by seeing that the shell is soft. You can feel it. You can yeah. feel it'll, it. It'll actually feel mushy. Okay. Um, and again, to find a vet, how do you find a vet if you've got a turtle? 